All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do one more here where we have to make a table and graph the equation. So we're doing all th forms except for the verbal statement. So here's, I'm just going to go ahead and make a graph real quick. And um, I know that I'm making a table. One, two, three, four, five, because those are the numbers in my domain. And then I'm going to use my function and start plugging in these x values. So starting with x equals 1, we're going to get y equals 2 times 1 minus 1, which is y equals 1. So I have a point at 1, 1. And we're going to go with x equals 2, which is y equals 2 times 2 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, or 3. So that's going to be at 2, 3, 2, 3. And then I got x equals 3. And that's going to be y equals 2 times 3 minus 1, which is 5. I'm going to do these a little bit faster now. Uh, oh, what happened? What, what happened to my 2, 3? That was there. It's gone now. Uh, but anyway, this is 3, 5 now. I'm going to run out of space. Uh, x equals 4 is going to be y equals 2 times 4 minus 1, which is 7. And let's extend this up a little bit. 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's 4, 7. And then finally, x equals 5 is going to be y equals 2 times 5 minus 1, which is 9. So we have the point 5, 9 right there. All right, if you've got questions, comments, concerns on that, make sure you ask them. Uh, otherwise, let's just kind of look at this last example we have here fairly quick. Um, putting it in context here. So the table shows the average scores on the mathematics section of the Scholastic Aptitude Test. That's the SAT uh, that you've heard so much about in the United States from 1997 to 2003. Now, uh, the, uh, as a function of time in years since 1997, in the table, 0 corresponds to the year 1997, 1 corresponds to 1998, and so on. So this is 1998. 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003. Okay. Um, the main reason why I wanted to do this example is to show you guys we've got some really large numbers down there. Um, when you have large numbers like this, when we make a graph, we don't need to label it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We don't have to like label it all the way up to 500. Like That's just a poor choice. Um, it is always okay to skip count. Go by twos, go by threes, go by fours. Um, it's also okay to start later as long as there's no other things. What you're going to do is whenever you have to start at a really high number, uh, you're going to go on that axis and you're just going to like draw a little squiggly line. And the squiggly line means, hey, there's stuff there, but we're starting up here. So this is like uh, we're going to go 5, 10, and then I'm going to go by twos, 5, 12, 5, 14, 5, 16. Notice because I'm doing it in a non-standard way that I'm labeling every single one. That's just to help avoid confusion for people who are looking at my graph. Okay, So if I am graphing these, I'm at 0, 5, 11. 5, 11 is right here. Uh, try that again. And then I'm at 1, 5, 12, which is there. I'm at 2, 5, 11, which is here. Uh, I'm at 3, 5, 14. Something weird happens. Whenever I like make a little circle, my pen wants to be like, oh, you're trying to do something. Uh, that is not related to what you're doing. So there's that. I'll make a little slash. There's 4, 5, 14, 5, 5, 16, and then 6, 5, 19. And there it is. There is my function graphed. Again, notice that I put the squiggly to inform us that there's numbers here. There's just nothing happening. And also, because I'm counting by twos, I'm counting the whole thing up by twos so that it's not confusing to look at, so that people know what's happening. All right. And that is everything from 1.8. That's everything with Chapter 1. We're done with Chapter 1. Okay? Woohoo! So... 
Uh, if you got questions, make sure that you were asking them in class. We're going to do a whole bunch of review and everything on Chapter 1 before we finish up. Uh, but thank you guys for watching, and I will see you another time. Bye.